Hey, what is up guys and welcome back. So today we're going to be doing part two of the real steady tutorials. We're going to go slightly a bit more advanced, also covering the settings here. And what I mean by settings, we're going to be covering the mixture of settings from the smoothest and the cropping. If we set the smoothness to low with slow cropping speed. And I've also came up with a couple special rules, which I found to be useful on almost all modes, which can be very useful depending on the kind of photography or the footage you're trying to get here. And I'm also going to be covering a bit more tips and tricks into the software. Now, also, if you are looking into getting the software, I do have a five dollar coupon down below for real steady go and everything was shot with a gopro hero 8 and if you missed my previous video where i've covered all the settings i'm currently using and why i'm using the playlist link will be down below now before getting started just a word from our sponsor the sponsor of the video is pcb way now they're one of the top pcb manufacturers out there and you can quickly have your projects ready made for you within 24 hours with their 24 hour service they also do have assembly and flashing services and it's the company i always use whenever i create a product and or project so go ahead and check the links down below so what we're going to be taking a look at today is turns 180 degree turns and also some rolls and flips to see how these settings actually affect not only the way your footage looks like but even the quality not as in the quality of smoothness this software can make your footage look like crap if you do the wrong thing especially when you're cropping and you have smoothness very high the amount of zoom it does on specific turns that take a specific amount of time could really ruin your footage and which I'm going to be showing you. Now, what we're gonna be taking a look at is four footage side by side, which are these right here. Uh, what these actually mean, just to clarify everything before we jump into it, is when I have smoothness low, what that means is smoothness is right about there and the cropping speed to, to slow, it would be like this. And we're gonna come back and see this chart if you do get lost, but just take a good look at it and maybe take a picture with your phone so you can follow along with the footage here. Now what we see here is we have the smooth low and the crop to slow. So these are actually far away from each other, which is the opposite spectrum. You have to de-link them. Don't have them linked together. It doesn't work really great, especially uh, for our FPV drones here, no matter if you're using a slow scene whoop or even a really fast FPV quadcopter. Now for this video, we're using just uh, the, the last built budget cinematic uh, drone, which was sort of a budget-ish drone. It's by far one of my favorites. So, and again, on the left side here, we're taking a look at both the smoothness to be low. So the amount of smoothness it's adding is low. It's actually between normal and low. And up top, we have the cropping to be slow and on the bottom, the cropping to be fast. And what the cropping means, basically the zooming in and the zooming out, but it does really ruin the footage and you have to keep a couple things in mind, which we're gonna cover right now. On the right side, we're looking at the high side, the smoothness set to high. We have the crop to slow and the crop to fast so we can see uh, the difference here. So let's go ahead and play these together. I'm actually going to uh, just disappear for a second. All right, there we go. All right, so first of all, we're just gonna watch the footage and then I'll explain everything right now. So there's a couple things you need to take into consideration. Right here, I'm turning 180 degrees. So this was my first turn, that's 180 degrees. And I did it between four to five seconds. And as you can tell, it looks beautiful on every setting. Here, I think I did a two second 180 degree turn and you could kind of see a couple things. And then the last turn I did was a really quick turn that will actually show you what's really going on. And we can actually also see, see if we pause it here, they're exactly in the same place. And uh, if you look on the bottom, look how far that bush is. If you look at the smoothness high, the crop slow, it's cropped in so much, but it's taking so long for it to come back out that everything, it just looks really disgustingly ugly because it's zoomed in so much and you lost all that quality. And again, we're getting into this step by step here. I just really wanted to quickly point that out here. So we're starting over again here. So again, the first turn was the slowest turn, which is the highly recommended one, which is like a four second turn. So keep that in mind. And then a two, three second turn is sometimes okay, depending on your settings. A really fast turn usually kind of doesn't look that nice anyways. So right now we're going through to do our first turn. We shouldn't see anything any differences really. So keep an eye on the sky and some of the other objects in the picture because this is exactly the same footage and they're moving exactly at the same time. So right now we're starting our first turn. Everything looks to be perfect, zoomed out, cropped in perfectly. Nothing is zoomed out more than the other. And we can also see the skyline. We can see just about everything. We can see this pole here. As you can tell, the cropping slow on smooth high, the, the pole has disappeared. That's supposed to be here like this one right there. That's actually a pole, it might be difficult to see. And you can see it here on the smoothness set to low. Now we do make our first turn and we see our first object starting to show. And again, smooth high crop slow is the worst. Also smooth high 
crop fast is even worse as well. And you'll get to see that. The slow stays in zoomed in a lot of the time when you have the smoothness to high and the crop to slow. It stays zoomed in so you always just have really bad quality. Kind of like you zoomed in way too much on a picture and you can see the pixelation. And you kind of want to avoid the smoothness to high crop slow. It'll still smooth it out even on low. On high, you really want to avoid and you get to see a little bit more of that. Now when you set fast here, it's going to do something really, really trippy in a bit on our, on our last turn after the second turn that we're going to go through what it does is it does something like a slingshot effect like you're basically here and it'll immediately take you to there from the zoom in effect it's pretty crazy you'll get to see that right now so right now we're going on our second turn and everything looks good we can see the rocks everything's still the same and right before you make something hard that's when it starts cropping in uh, so it keeps the footage stable so we can see everything's still looking good looking good here is our first zoom in as you can tell here you can see how much this has zoomed in and you can see how much more we have here. Now, once I play these uh, separately or in full screen mode, you could actually see the difference. And when you watch them back to back right now, it might be a little bit difficult, but um, yeah, just keep that in mind. The smooth high. And again, you kind of really want to avoid the smoothness above normal. So now back to this, I always highly recommend you set the smoothness under normal because when you have high setup, it, the higher you go, the more it'll allow you to zoom in. So Think of smoothness as zooming in more than anything. Um, the amount of zoom to put. And you do lose quality, especially on FPV drones. Maybe for someone walking on the street, that's fine. It's not going to zoom in that bad. But for an FPV drone, it's going to zoom in pretty dramatically. And it's going to ruin your footage. And I've noticed that quite a lot. Even I here could be a bit too much. Maybe you should drop it down here. But again, it comes back to you. It comes back to your flying and the specific maneuver you did when you were doing that. So always stay under normal. It's the best right now for FPV uh, cinematography. Now let's go ahead and continue back and we'll see the cropping speeds and everything. All right, so we just did the second turn again, if you forgot. And now we're going to do a really, really fast turn. So everything's looking good, are we? Yep, okay. So here, everything is looking pretty good. And as you can tell here, you can see on the smoothness high how much we have zoomed in. Look where we are here. This is the smoothness low. Look how far we are and look at this one. It's pushed us all the way to this edge right here. And if we pull over, it's it's uh, basically cut this much off right there. It's zoomed us in about that much as you can tell. That's quite a lot of resolution lost here uh, from the smoothness high. It's, it's pretty dramatic. So let's go ahead and continue this. And again, you can tell right here, look how far we are away from this little circle and look how much it's zoomed us in. And look how close we are to the bushes. These actually look pixelated when you have this full screen. It's pretty bad. So keep that in mind again. And again, we can see the skyline already starting to show up here. And then later it comes here. Now, this is where it gets interesting. So the crop slow is gonna keep zooming in like crazy here. Uh, because it's getting ready for me to do a roll, which we're going to cover later on because it's going to be too much data to take in right now. So, but it's going to stay zoomed in. You can see how much it has zoomed in. It's taking forever to come back out. But as you can tell, the crop fast has zoomed out fully. But what the cropping is going to do now, since there is an upcoming hard maneuver, is it's going to slingshot us. Now, keep an eye on this one really quickly. So you can see, look at look how it slingshotted us. That's not normal. We were going slow and it pushed us through. Now, what's really nice with this, you can actually use this to your own advantage to add some sort of an effect once you understand how these actually work. So you can do some crazy looking things once you fully understand it and built experience with it, which is what I'm currently doing right now. But I'll cover that in a later video. Again, we're doing this one step at a time. But it does this slingshot effect. You also do some of the lose some of the quality and um, yeah, it's pretty interesting. So as you can tell, look at the crop slow, how far it has zoomed. We are basically right there because of the zoom. The quality is absolutely horrendous here. Uh, so yeah, just be careful. I should have let it render more, but because I rendered so many files, it took me six hours just to keep rendering different segments with different settings. And I just came up with those are the best way to actually show you what's really going on. I have so many files rendered here. So let me go ahead and show you the last turn again with me removing my head so you get a better idea of what's going on. Take a look at the uh, sky. Take a look at the skyline on this one. The sky, how, how it comes back into focus. It looks really nice to give this this really nice effect. Now watch this. You see how it came in? It just gave you that full skyline. This is the cropping slow. It's much smoother. It doesn't do these drastic um, movements, if I would say. Maybe that's, that's, that's the word. I don't know what the hell to say. But anyways, look at that. Sometimes the, the crop fast looks nice as well. 
And uh, I usually like, you know, that's what's really nice. With the smooth low, if you have the smooth set to low, you can play around with the cropping speed to get the desired effect you want. So let's go ahead and remove VLC here. So there's something, again, like I mentioned, we can actually trim this. So if you see these little white sliders, not this white slider, sorry about that. So if you see these white sliders right here, so we can actually tell it, find where we, where we started take flying, basically, and then take off. So we can set the trim right there. So let's just see, where did we take off here? There we go, we took off right here. So if we come in right there, and I'm gonna show you another example right here. It's gonna be a bit in slow motion because that's how the software runs, of the, the, the crop slow with the smoothness set to high. You'll see the zoom on that roll that I was talking about in a bit here. So yeah, back to the trim. So if you don't wanna export the whole clip, you can just move uh, these little white ones right here to wherever you want and export it. However, what you do lose is you basically lose the audio. So you lose the audio of the file here. And I wish if Real Steady is watching this to add some sort of a timer down here to know where you've actually cut this and where you've ended this because there, then I would be able to make a tutorial to show you how you can even put your own uh, sound back exactly to where it was if you didn't want to lose your audio. But this, is, this would be a really fast way to export your files. So right now we're gonna go ahead and take a look at the current settings that I have. So we're gonna, we're gonna go to slow and we're gonna go to high here. We'll go to full blown high and we'll, we'll just put it right there. Okay, so maybe this is slightly a bit too extreme. Let me just see the current settings that I was running before. All right, so right now we're watching the smoothness on high and the cropping speed on slow. So here's that last turn that we did right here, I think. Nope, this is not it. It's gonna be, yep, this one right here. Okay, so you can see that right there. In the software, it just looks kind of crappy, but you saw how it looked like. As you can tell, we're still zoomed in. We don't see as much skyline as we did with the other settings. Now, if, if you can see this, you can see how terrible the quality is here. We are zoomed in way too much, way too much. Now watch this, because right after this, I was going to do a roll. So that's why I prepared that zoom, just so it could kind of compensate for it. But there's no way in hell it could compensate for something like that. What, when it, where it really gets interesting is when you set it to fast, and we press OK, it does again that slingshot effect that I was talking about. And if you're able to use that to your advantage, you could make some crazy looking things, which will just awe oh, a lot of people. Oh, that was fast. OK. So here's the slingshot. Hopefully we can see it since it does it in like super slow motion. So look how far we are right now. And then it's just going to zoom us in really quickly. It's, it's in slow motion. You can see that's not normal. Look how much it zoomed in. Look at that. That's crazy. This quality is terrible right now. Hopefully you guys can see what I'm seeing. And then you do the flip. So it prepared itself for the next move over in a really weird way. But if you're able to come up with creative ideas to actually use that to your advantage, that'd be just pretty crazy. Uh, you can do some crazy cool things with that, but you have to set up some sort of a limit because that zoom is just insane. Like maybe a transition. No, but you can do that in transition post or something. I don't know, but you can do some crazy stuff with this. So yeah, that, that's what's really going on with these here. So, well, that's gonna include it for this video, guys. If you missed my settings on the GoPro, I do have a video on that, which is the first part of this series. And again, the playlist to the series will be linked down below. And you can also get a $5 coupon on Real Steady Go if you're planning on purchasing it. And um, yeah, let me know what you guys wanna see. That's very important because I don't know what you guys wanna see, so I'm trying to do my best. And again, I'm using a GoPro Hero 8. Uh, you don't have to use black. I'm actually not even using HyperSmooth. I'm just recording in 4K or 2.7K 4x3. And this software automatically stretches it and removes the distortion, which is something really nice. And it does give it a pretty nice effect. As you can tell with the skyline, it just feels much more 3D. It just feels pretty amazing here. And I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. And again, leave a link down below if you do like this content. And um, yeah, everything's linked down below. They do have a Patreon with a ton of giveaways. So come join me and I'll see you in the next one, guys. Peace out.